Chapter 20 Connor sat on the deck, staring at the cell phone in his hands. He had just sent a text to Travis and was awaiting a reply. While he waited, he stared into the woods in front of him. The sun was slowly setting and the dark green trees appeared black. It was weird having the trampoline gone. He still couldn't believe someone had tried to kill his uncle. Connor had been so mad at him that night, but not enough to kill. Who could have done it? It had to have been the madman who'd murdered Leper. Did the psycho live in those woods? Was he watching Connor at this very moment? Connor looked, but saw no one. He looked down at his phone and saw a red light blinking. He checked the reply text. Leave me alone or I'm calling the cops. I'm warning you. Connor's heart felt like it had been stabbed. Why was Travis so mad? No one had ever threatened to call the cops on Connor before, and that scared him. He grew nauseated as he typed a reply with clumsy fingers. Are you worried because my uncle saw us? Travis replied, I'm worried because you tried to kill him. Connor's eyes nearly popped out of his head. What? He screamed, and then realized Travis couldn't hear. He typed, WHAT? in all caps. I know you did it, and I think you killed your neighbor, too. Where the hell was this coming from? Connor's hand shook, and tears blurred his eyes. He never killed anyone. He jumped to his feet and ran inside. He saw Uncle Don peeking out of his office on the left. Were you outside the whole time? he asked his nephew. Yes. Don't go out there at night. Why not? There's nothing out there. Uncle Don looked at him as if the teen had gone insane. How could you think that after all that's happened? I'm surprised you don't also think I'm the one doing all this, Connor said. It's a popular theory. That seemed to strike a chord. What are you talking about? Connor shook his head. I've seen the way you've been looking at me lately. It's the same way you looked at me after Mom killed her boyfriend. Uncle Don narrowed his eyes. And what way is that? Like you think I'm a fucking monster, Connor shouted. All my life you've thought of me as the one who killed him, and now you think I killed Mr. Leper and attacked you, don't you? And I didn't. They both stood in stunned silence. Connor was breathing heavily, and more tears streamed down his cheeks. He had been holding that in for a long time. He was shaking from the release. I guess there's no point in denying it now, Uncle Don said. But it's not your fault. He took a step forward. Connor took one back. I should have told you this a long time ago, Uncle Don went on. There's something inside you, something you were born with, that makes you want to hurt people. What are you talking about? Connor truly was scared now. It's a curse. Your father and I dealt with it when we were your age. We were both cursed, and Ethan passed it on to you. A curse? Connor backed into the porch door, crinkling the blinds. Does that mean Jordan is cursed too? Possibly. Uncle Don sighed. Then he could be the one doing this. Uncle Don shook his head. I don't think so. Why not? Because he's your son? And I'm just a bastard? You're not a bastard. Uncle Don had his hands up, trying to calm Connor, but it made the teen even more anxious. Uncle Don was coming at him from the left, and the stairs out of the den were straight ahead. Connor went for them, but his uncle cut him off. Connor turned around and went out the back door. Just as Don got to the open door, he saw his nephew disappear into the woods. 
Don darted down the patio steps and charged into the trees without thinking. Connor! Don couldn't see the boy, but heard him up ahead, pushing away branches and stepping on twigs. Don followed the sounds, even as his stomach started to twist. Connor was giving off that nauseating energy again. The sound suddenly stopped, and so did Don. He was standing near a small rise and could hear a stream just on the other side. The nausea vanished. Either Connor was gone, or he wasn't very close. A twig snapped behind Don. He spun around, looking about, but he saw nothing. He knew he was being watched, though. Connor! His voice echoed off the trees. A sound, an exhalation of breath, from behind him. He spun, but again saw nothing. He heard leaves crunching in the darkness as something fled. Don wasn't as scared as he should have been. At least, not for his own safety. He was worried about his nephew. Connor! He heard a grunt on the other side of the rise. He was up and over and saw a stream. It reflected tiny bits of moonlight that managed to penetrate the canopy above. It was so dark that Don could barely see. He could only hear. He knew where he was, though. He was standing directly where Leper had died. The hole had been filled, but there appeared to be another one on the other side of the water. Don crossed the stream and studied it. It was very deep, so much so that he couldn't see the bottom. Why did Connor keep digging holes? Was this a trap? Before he could dwell on the question for long, he was knocked down into the hole. He hit the bottom head first and saw stars. Moments later, he started to panic. He didn't want to die upside down in a hole, though he did feel he deserved it. At least, at the back of his mind, he did. He started to struggle and didn't notice right away that he had more room than he should have. Dirt started raining into the hole, but by then, Don was right side up. He'd twisted his neck and shoulders, feeling his muscles spasm. It was painful as hell, but slowly suffocating in a hole would be worse. He had to get out. He started climbing out of the hole as fast as he could. His fingers dug into the dirt wall effortlessly, perhaps due to his body being fueled by fear, and he reached the top of the hole. When he looked around, he saw tree branches swaying, as if someone had just run past them. Don climbed out and swept the dirt off of his clothes. His head was spinning, but he slowly regained his senses. He started in the direction of the swaying branches, crossing the stream. He already knew which direction he was going. Toward the house. A moment after starting, he stopped. He heard laughter. Who's there? Don asked. He couldn't see anyone, but he knew someone was up ahead. Connor? he called. The voice laughed again. I'm not Connor. The words were a whisper, but Don recognized the voice. It was that of the demon. He remembered that voice from his waking and sleeping nightmares. I killed you, Don said to the dark woods ahead. Yes, you did, and I'm still gone, back to hell. The voice chuckled. Don suddenly remembered that fateful night when he confronted the monster that ruined his life. How are you here, then? he finally asked the voice. Through a vessel, it replied from farther away. Who's the vessel? Someone you know. Don kept following the voice. He was no longer afraid. He was angry. 
he was almost reckless in his pursuit of the vessel as he followed it back to the house. Why are you using a vessel? How? There was no reply. He kept going, huffing and puffing and sweating despite the cool air. He quickened his pace. He could see the house now. The back door was open. Dawn ran into the den. The TV was on. Had it been on when he chased after Connor? He looked up into the living room without actually going into it. The house was quiet, save the TV noise. He raced up the stairs to the second floor. He checked Connor's room but found it empty. He opened Jordan's door across the hall. Jordan was passed out, his head hanging over the foot of the bed. His homework was scattered on the floor and across his chest. He snored peacefully. Don sighed in relief, but all was not well here. Either Connor was still in the house, or he had taken off. Don had to find him, because if the voice had spoken true, the boy was being possessed by the creature Don had already killed. Connor kept moving, never looking back. He had to get away from Uncle Don's house. He rode along the freeway on his bike with a backpack full of clothes that he quickly grabbed from his room while his uncle was still out in the woods looking for him. Connor barely remembered coming back to the house until he reached his room. He must have been in a trance or something. He was scared now, though. He had nowhere to go. No job, nothing. He was afraid of what his uncle had said about him. Connor had never murdered anyone in his life. Mom killed her boyfriend when he was five. Some crazy person killed Mr. Leper. Connor couldn't remember harming anyone. Couldn't remember. There were a lot of things he couldn't remember, including going back to the house to get his stuff a while ago. Most of what happened at the laser tag arena was a blur as well. He did remember running into those bullies Leo and Jack. Jack was dead, and Leo was insane, but both of those had nothing to do with Connor. Right? Connor grew more frustrated as cars zoomed past him. He didn't even realize where he was riding to until he saw the exit in front of him. He knew who lived nearby. When he got to the house, he lightly tapped on the bedroom window. A light was on, and Connor had seen a silhouette pass by a moment ago. After what felt like an eternity, the silhouette returned and peeked through the blinds, and then the window opened. What are you doing here? Travis asked in a harsh whisper. Can I come in? No. Please? Connor had put as much desperation as he could into the plea. It worked. Travis backed away from the window and let Connor inside. Connor hid his head on the sill. Travis quickly stepped forward, grabbed the sides of Connor's face, and kissed the top of his head. Connor grinned, causing Travis to back away once again, frowning. The room was nice and warm. It had gotten so cold outside that Connor could barely feel his fingers. Why are you here? Travis asked. I had a fight with my uncle. Did you kill him? It was meant to be sarcastic, but Connor was still stung. What did you fight about? Travis asked next, seeing the expression on the other's face. About my murderous habits? Connor replied in his head. Stupid shit. I don't want to talk about it. Then why are you here if you don't want to talk? Why are you snapping at me? Because I told you to leave me alone. Do you hate me? Yes. Then why did you let me in? Travis found himself at a loss for words. It's because you like me, Connor suggested. Shut the fuck up. Travis was suddenly angry. I feel sorry for you. You're pathetic. 
Connor said nothing. He could barely breathe now, let alone speak. You don't mean that. You just kissed the bump on my head. Yes, I do. You just don't want to hear it. He avoided the part about the kiss. That truly hurt Connor, though he said nothing in response. Instead, he approached Travis, closed his eyes, leaned in. Travis punched him on his left cheek. Connor opened his eyes just as he started falling to the floor, stunned. Travis was shaking, his face red, his fists clenched. Without being told to, Connor left through the window. He rode his bike down an empty highway, his eyes clouded with tears. He could barely see, but he didn't care. His face was numb from the cold, but he didn't care about that either. He was too angry to care. He kept pedaling, his legs burning with exertion. He was vaguely aware of where he was, far from his own house, and that was all that mattered. Though he fiercely missed his cousin and wondered when he would see him again. Connor noticed headlights behind him, but didn't bother looking. He hoped it wasn't his uncle. A black SUV passed him and then pulled onto the shoulder that Connor was riding. An old man got out and stared back at him. Connor wanted to pass him, but found himself stopping instead. The man had completely white hair and a beer gut. He was dressed in a maroon sweater with tan slacks. What's a boy your age doing out on these woods alone? The man asked. Connor was surrounded by miles of empty road in both directions. He was miles from help. I'm 25, he replied. Now, now, you can't be any more than 16, am I right? I have a gun, Connor lied. No, you don't, said the old man. Though, I believe your uncle had one when he was around your age. I have the distinct impression you think I want to harm you. Rest assured, I don't. My uncle? You know him? The man nodded. Who are you? What do you want? To help. The man sighed before saying, Connor, I'm your grandfather. Grandfather.